Hey everyone, next one in our series on which mapping libraries you should use. Really common question that I get all the time by people starting off new projects or people just trying to scope projects. What should they use? Google Maps, Mapbox, MapLibra, Open Layers, uh, you know, Apple Maps, Leaflet. You know, there's so many different types of mapping libraries. How do you know which one is right for your project? Today we're going to talk about MapLibra. So what is MapLibra before we jump into my five reasons why you should use it? Um, MapLibra is basically like the open source Mapbox. The short story is that uh, Mapbox was open source in terms of like everybody could contribute to it. It was possible to use the library. If you didn't use Mapbox's backend tiling services, you could use Mapbox GLJS free of charge and just use your own tile sets and use all the power of that library. But with Mapbox 2.0, about a year ago or two years ago, I don't exactly remember when, I'll put a link to the big controversial thread on GitHub where this happened, uh, Mapbox switched to being closed. So in Mapbox 2.0, Mapbox kind of closed its doors to some degree, and I think you can still contribute to the library and that sort of thing, but you're not allowed to use it, even load it on your page It'll just not work unless you have made a Mapbox account and have a Mapbox token. You can still use it with other tile sets. You have to have an access token, which may incur fees if your website goes to very, very high levels. So this turned off a lot of people in the open source community uh, who were, you know, who were kind of really loving this way that this thing that Mapbox was contributing to the community, and a lot of people spun off and in made Map Libra. And they basically took Mapbox at its last open source iteration and made it into MapLibra. So MapLibra is basically a branch off of Mapbox just before it closed. And so, so basically you can look at MapLibra as sort of like the free version of Mapbox without all of Mapbox's latest features built in and without Mapbox's like backend of studio and all that sort of thing. So anyway, that might be a little complicated if you're just trying to figure out, should I use MapLibra? So let's go into some of the reasons why MapLibra is good. And I'm also going to try to like, you know, contrast it with Mapbox so that you understand what you're getting and what you're not getting when it comes to MapLibra. So reason number one why you use MapLibra is that it's open source. It's got a fantastic community. It's free to use in every sense that you can uh, really think about that and all its stuff is open. It's really part of that thing in the web that developers love, just like Leaflet, which is this open source sharing kind of model. Of course, that means that you're not gonna get necessarily the kind of responsiveness and updates that you're gonna get from a company that has the money to just pour into development and customer support. But that being said, you know, Map, MapLibra has a pretty great community and there's actually a lot of very large companies that are backing MapLibra. Um, on, you know, big companies like Microsoft or Amazon are starting to use MapLibra in a lot of places. So I think you can expect that this library will actually be getting extremely robust support as the years go on. And it's also very extendable because of its open source nature. Plugins are being built. All you have to do is have your own tile set or have a tile set from some provider that you will plug into this map and it will just be totally free. Uh, you don't even need to use the tile set at all. You could just draw features on the map and that's going to be totally free. The second reason why MapLibra is awesome is that it's basically as powerful as Mapbox. So if you watch the video I had on why to use Mapbox, most of those reasons are probably going to apply to MapLibra, but bear in mind, you don't get all the auxiliary Mapbox stuff. So you don't get this web interface with Mapbox where you can upload and store all this data and it will do all this tiling stuff for you and you can visually create the styles. That's not a thing with MapLibra. There's no login and build styles and upload data. That is a Mapbox thing that requires like a lot of server power. So it's not really reasonable to do that on an open source level, at least yet. You also aren't going to get all the Mapbox like services. So geocoding, directions, APIs, things like that. Mapbox generally restricts the use of those. If you read the terms of service, they restrict them to be used with Mapbox maps. So while they are possible to like integrate with MapLibra, there might be some issues there. I'm not totally sure. I think you might be able to mix and match them a little. The key is that in the end, you're going to be using Mapbox API, uh, Mapbox access tokens, but just double check that. But other than that, 
Map Libra is going to give you tons of powerful stuff. You're going to be able to handle tons and tons of data on your map at once. The vector-based canvas systems that Mapbox uses, you get to, you know, you have all this source and layer and you can do lots of hover effects and, and heat maps and all this stuff. A lot of stuff that's in other mapping uh, libraries, but at least if you were used to Mapbox or if you kind of know that you're going to be working with a lot of big data, Map Libra is probably a pretty good choice on that front. Uh, so anything that you can do with Mapbox, you can mostly do with Map Libra, but the branch gets farther and farther from each other as Mapbox continues to add features in 2.0. So you're going to be missing something like globe view. Um, you're going to be missing all these different projection abilities that Mapbox has, while Map Libra still has some stuff like that, like 3D terrain, but it doesn't have, it's not up to date with the latest Mapbox. Third reason Map Libra is awesome. It's got great documentation and great community support. Because it's an open source effort, there are just people so involved in this, so, uh, you know, every day working on this. They have bounties that are out there for developers to work on new features and keep things up to date and keep the documentation good. And overall, especially if you're kind of beginner getting into Mapbox, Map Libra, the documentation is very paralleled with Mapboxes. So you're going to be able to navigate between them very well. And you'll understand that pretty much every concept that applies with Mapbox applies in Map Libra. So documentation is good, easy to navigate, easy to understand, um, easy to understand, and the community is there to help with more complicated questions anytime that happens. Now, bear in mind that Mapbox and Map Libra in general are somewhat difficult systems to learn in terms of mapping. They're not as easy as Leaflet or Google Maps if you're brand new to mapping. So you might want to take a look at one of those first if you're brand new to it. But once you're a little deeper into mapping, they're probably the most powerful APIs that you're going to find. And of course, any documentation that you find out there, stack overflow questions that you find about Mapbox are probably going to apply to Map Libra. So you can feel free to search for things with Mapbox, even if you're trying to do them in Map Libra. Four, on the front of that community support, there are lots of custom plugins being built out for Map Libra and lots of custom uh, auxiliary stuff you can do. So although you might not be able to do geocoding, because normally you would need to do that with Mapbox, Map Libra puts examples on their site of doing that with Nominatum, which is another service that is open source that you can use. So the Map Libra folks, the people involved in Map Libra, have really made this effort to switch off Mapbox and make Map Libra its own standalone thing using all open source resources. So somewhat like Leaflet, which has all these plugins that you can put in there for your directions, your geocoding, your geolocation, your heat maps, this and that, MapLibra does something very similar where they're extending it all the time to introduce you and bring you those open source services. So again, it's part of that open source, part of that strong community. You don't really have to worry about MapLibra not having a lot of the features uh, because you're going to be able to extend it with a lot of these community plugins. And reason number five to use Map Libra in your project is that it's growing. So I talked a bit about how uh, it's being taken on by some larger companies, how it's basically like Mapbox in most of its functionality and its power. So in terms of large data sets and all that sort of thing. But number five is that it's probably a really great library to learn as a developer if you're looking to do more mapping beyond just this one project that you're going to do. If your project demands big data, maybe MapLibra is the right choice, maybe Mapbox is the right choice. Kind of hard to say, it depends on the specifics of the project. But if you want to learn more about mapping and get more involved as a mapping dev, or you're learning this area because you're interested in it, MapLibra is probably a really good tool to start learning because I think it's going to grow a lot and it's going to diverge somewhat from Mapbox in the coming years and I don't think it's going anywhere. There's a very strong community effort behind it, and there's funding and a great board of directors with a lot of people that are really big in the geospatial stuff online. So I think it's a good time to get involved in Map Libra, and I would recommend it to anyone who's going to become a mapping developer. 